everybody. Um, so I promised that I would be posting some little free videos. So I'm going to post um, today about planks. So we hear all the time that we should be doing planks. We hear about these plank challenges, all of this stuff. And for me, um, my whole question, my whole life was why? Everything, why? You know? If someone asked me to do something or to consider something, I wanted to understand the why of it. And so when I got into movement to help heal my body, I had a lot of questions. You know, I didn't, didn't just like to go to classes just because it was a class. I wanted to know why. Why, why am I doing this? Why do you want me to do 100 crunches? Why? Why do you want me to do a, a, a plank for 20 minutes or for two minutes? Why? How does that help me in other parts of my life? What is the function of that? Is it going to help me? Is it going to hurt me? I used to go to a lot of classes when I was in college and then out of college before I learned any of this stuff and I got hurt all the time. And a, a big reason why was because I didn't understand the why or the how. So let's talk about planks. All right. So everybody knows pretty much a plank. It's just getting into this all four position, which we do all the time, right? We end up getting on our hands and knees for lots of things. Um, and then to extend both legs out without dropping that line of the body into your plank position, right? And if you're doing planks and you're doing them by dropping your hips really low or tucking your tailbone under or destabilizing the shoulders, you're not doing yourself much service. So I just want to say that real quickly. So you want to make sure that when you send those legs back into space, you're still using the backside of your legs and your shoulders are nice and strong. You're not destabilizing your shoulders, thrusting your head forward, pulling your shoulders back. You don't want to plank like this. So you really start off in this nice, long, strong position of the torso, send the leg back, activate that leg. To me, I'll play around with almost like lifting the leg up a little bit. I don't want my hip to drop when I put my other leg back. I push through my heel a bit so that I can really feel this back side of me. So I'm not tucking under and dropping down. I'm really nice and strong through the posterior chain, the back of me. And then I send my other leg out to find my plank position. So what is that good for? Well, when we're on all fours like this, kids do this all the time when they're learning to come off of, up, off of the ground. You see babies, they'll be here, they're trying to push themselves up off the ground to strengthen their back muscles. At some point, they start getting here. They start going through these rocking back and forth motions because they're trying to get strong in their back. They start playing around with crawling. Can I crawl while being strong on my back? And the reason why children do that is because they're getting their back strong enough so that when they come to this position, they can maintain that against the load of gravity. So that when they come up, they don't fall apart back down to the ground. So that's a practice. The plank then becomes applicable to that. So it's helping you maintain your upright position from here, but then when you stand up, it's really helping you be strong through the whole backside of your body when you stand. So a lot of times when I'm teaching people about standing, like, you know, people will come in and They'll be standing all kinds of ways, you know, like this is standing properly or this is standing properly and they don't realize what they're doing in their body or maybe they're standing like this, you know, all these ways of standing. Um, what I'll teach them is if you just stand and look at yourself in the mirror and just get into your stance, right? Whatever that is for you. For me, it was this. I used to stand like that. I would tuck my hips under, I would thrust my shoulders back and doing that would push my neck forward. So this was what I thought standing up straight was because I'd heard in classes to tuck my tailbone under, push my shoulders back. So I got really good at that and it started causing a lot of problems. I would also not really think about what my lower body was doing, right? So depending on where you're, where you're at, people have different ways of standing. 
But check it out. Look at yourself in the mirror in front of you or to the side of you and see what your kind of stance is, right? From there, what I have people do typically is reach their hands out in front of them and imagine they're doing a plank. So I'm gonna push my hands forward and activate the back side of me. I'm pushing my hands forward so that I get my shoulders over my hips here. So for me, I went from this to this. So it's as if I'm doing a plank while standing, right? Because again, if I was doing a plank and I'm like this, that's not a good plank. I wanna activate that posterior chain. I'm also activating my core. Again, you know, most of you probably already know that your torso is your core. It's easier to say what your core is not than what it is. Your core is not your neck, your head, your arms, and your legs. Everything else is your core, including your shoulder girdle, including your pelvic girdle, including your glutes, your back, and your torso, or your, your belly, and your chest. All of that is your core. I think of almost like I have a huge X across my body, front and back, and I'm strong through the front line and the back line of that X. So one part of that X isn't bigger than the other, right? I'm trying to be nice and strong through that X pattern, and my limbs are attached to that pattern. And so by playing around with a plank, you can find that, right? So if I, again, if I'm in this plank and I pick up my back too high, you can see that I'm, my back X is longer than my front X. Or if I'm dropped down too low, the front is longer than the back, right? I'm trying to get that X pattern strong. I'm trying to get the back of my legs strong, right, for standing so I'm not tucking that tailbone under. I'm not letting go of the back of my legs. My shoulder girdle is nice and strong against my rib cage. I'm not pulling those shoulders off of my back. I'm also not rounding forward too much. I'm trying to stay even through here. Yeah, so play with it. Now there's all kinds of other applications for plank, such as if I'm gonna walk or push something, I wanna push something, I get more into that plank position, right? Running, running and the list goes on. And I'll teach more about that later, but that's just a little tutorial on the plank and what it's good for. I hope that helped you and we'll be posting more. Thanks so much.